possibly the most requested update for capacities in its history has just gone live. Welcome to a walkthrough of the new mobile app, which has now launched for all users for free in the relevant app stores. I've left a link to each of those in the description. So if you'd like to follow along, download the app there, log in, come back and let's explore the mobile app together. Now, this app is designed to be an on-the-go companion to the desktop app. So it has a very similar experience, but it's focusing really on the things that you want to do when you're on the go. You can see that I've written down some of the things that that includes, such as quick access to daily notes, the ability to quickly capture things to capacities, and obviously to search and explore the content you've already got. There is also the AI assistant, which is completely built in, but I'll do a separate video going into that in more depth. So this video is applicable to all of our users. So let's get started with this walkthrough. Now, the navigation for the mobile app is a combination of these buttons at the bottom and some swipe actions, which you will see a lot of later. We're going to start in the daily note, which is the center of the app, just like it is in the desktop version and here the first tab that you see the default view is the blocks so where can you write things down just here you can have the full editing experience that you do on desktop so you have the ability to add tags links to create new things with the add button there's all your options here you've also got some editing options some color and all of those things there. You can obviously visit previous daily notes by scrolling in back in time and picking a date and you can access future daily notes by scrolling forwards in time. There's always that button to take you back to today as well. Now this daily note is probably where you can do a lot of your like quick capture when you're out and about but you've also got the secondary tab which is everything related to this date in terms of have you made any references to the date or a time today and what have you created today and as you can see there are a few things there. Now with this bar always being at the bottom you can always get back to your daily note so I'm in a different object now and I can click that button and I can come back and get typing so it is always there for you in this daily note you will also see these three dots in the top right and you'll also see these in like your other objects and this is the three dot menu that you're used to seeing on the desktop app as well there's not as many functions. So for example, you still have all your daily note templates if you have any, but you won't be able to create new ones or edit them. As mentioned, this app is designed to be a companion to the desktop app, but there are still some functions that you can only do on desktop. So creating and editing templates, changing object types around, creating new object types, things like that, that's a desktop activity. We're just thinking about what you need to do on the go. So applying templates, no problem, exporting, sharing, copying things, all available through the three dots that you'll see in various screens. Now, if you're thinking about how you get to your other content, you can swipe to get to the left-hand sidebar, which is very similar to what you see on desktop. You've got your space switcher at the top, so if you use multiple spaces, you can choose which one you want to be in now. You've also got the list of things you've recently opened on mobile, any open tabs, and your pinned objects as well. I'll click on travel to show you what a, a page looks like or an area object in this example. Got the blocks as the main view, so again, you can get writing quickly, but you've also got any properties and you can explore the graph too, which is great for showing your friends how cool Capacities is. Then you have your object list below, so you can still access all of your objects on the go. We know this is really important. And not only that, but you can access the dashboard pages and views you've got as well. So in this project object type, I have some saved queries and these are in my dashboard and I can still see them as tabs at the top as well, just like on desktop. Or I can click all and just see a list of everything that I have. It's a really simplified view here. There's not different options. It's just a list so you can find what you need quickly and get writing or get reviewing or whatever you need. While we're here, I'll also mention that the properties are, you can fill them in, but you can't create new ones or edit the object type as mentioned, but they're there for you to look at and edit if you need. And you can see the three dot menu 
here as well. So you can pin things, use your templates as I showed you in the daily note. So you can view all your objects through this list here. You can view all the settings you can edit on mobile here and you can change to dark mode if you would prefer. Now you might want to find your objects through your types like here or you might just want to use search and to do that we'll swipe the other way and we get the search bar. Of course this view is also accessible through the search button at the bottom. So this is a search that you can use for titles but also for content and also for properties. So if I type in author a property is returned to me and you can use this to help you navigate around if you'd like. So we've talked about three of the buttons so far. We have the left sidebar, the search bar and the daily note. We also have the AI assistant which is obviously for our pro users who have AI enabled and this is the ability to bring the AI assistant on the go with you. It's so useful for when you just need to quickly ask a question and you get the answer right there for you. But as mentioned, I will look at this in more depth in a separate video. So the final button to explore is this quick action button. And this is somewhere for you to very quickly create a page so you can get something out of your head onto this page. Some people would do this in their daily notes. Others would prefer a separate object. This is a way that you can do that. But obviously it's a general page and you'll have to wait until you're on the desktop to change its type. So we've also given you the option to choose a particular object type from this list if that fits your workflows better. Then we've got some options here. So you can take a quick note and that will take you to a block for you to start typing in your daily note. And you can also take a picture or upload photos and files as objects into your space from your phone. And you can also paste from your clipboard as well. So think of this quick action button as the actions you can do in your command palette. It's similar to that. And all of that is available through that plus button. Now, we've thought about what you want to do in capacities and try to make an amazing experience for this. But we also know it's important to be able to get information into capacities when you're on the go as well. And for that, we have the share sheet. So let's say I want to save a link to capacities. I can open up Safari and find a link that I want, maybe some use cases on our website and click share. I've got capacities in this spot here, but if you can't see it, just scroll along and it will be in here. If not, it will be where it says more and you can choose to edit this so that capacities is right at the top for easy access. Once you've done that, you can press on capacities and this web link is now going to be brought into capacities to the space of your choosing with those few clicks. Now I have that web link, I might tag it with inbox so I can come back to it later because I'm on the go. I don't have time to think about it too much right now, but it's in capacities where I need it for me to review afterwards. This capturing via the share sheet also works with images. So I can scroll down to this image, press on it, click share on capacities again, choose my space. And this time it's recognized it as an image. And I can now see that in capacities and I can zoom around, have a look in more depth and take some notes on it if I require. And this idea works with text as well. So I can highlight some text go to share and go to capacities. So wherever there's a share button, try and add it to capacities and you will have a variety of options depending on what media type you're trying to save. Here it's just text, so I can choose to add it either to the daily note or to a page. And that's what you can see has happened there. So now that I've got some text, I want to show you what the editing experience is like. So just like on desktop, you can edit text within a block and you can edit a whole block. So if you just want to look at the text, you can just use your cursor and like double click and highlight what you want and then apply any of the settings that pop up here. So I can make that bold. I can make my daily note pink. I could make a new object from this selection. So let's make a page that I can then go and visit and it will be linked in the rough, of course. Got lots of options, essentially, all here. 
the final thing I'll show is how I can add a tag. That's just editing text within a block. What if you want to apply it to a whole block? Well, you can swipe on the block and then you can see that you get this select option at the right hand side and you can choose as many or as few as you'd like to apply some actions to. So you can see everything here. And then when you're done, just close that or swipe it away and that's edited for you. So that's everything for this video. I hope that this has been a useful walkthrough for you to get to know the new mobile app, but equally we've tried to design it in a way that feels natural and feels like a natural extension of the experience on desktop. But as always, if you have any questions about it, please let us know in the comments below.